Hi, I'm Robert Joseph. Today I'm going to talk to you about this sewing machine. Um, now this is a brother brand sewing machine and previously I was not a fan of this machine but um, I'm actually going to create a whole series of videos um, with this machine to teach you how to use this machine um, but I'm also going to tell you why my mind was changed about this machine. So um, before I get too involved with this video I do just want to give the basic disclaimer that um, I have no affiliation with Brother. Brother doesn't even know that I'm doing this video. Um, I don't get paid by Brother, so all of my opinions about this machine are very much my own. Um, and uh, what you'll be seeing is how I use the machine and how I use the attachments on the machine. Um, so I just needed to get that out of the way, um, just like everybody else does in their videos. Okay, so uh, this again is the Brother Brand sewing machine. It's model um, number LX3817. Um, and some of them, you see that I have two different colors here. I believe it also comes in a light blue and also a pink, although I uh, don't quote me on that. I think I've seen a pink one, but they all have the same uh, basic model number LX3817. So I'm not going to go back and do an unboxing. I'm not into like, you don't need to watch me open a box. I think everybody knows how to open a box and pull the stuff out. I've got all this stuff here. I'm just going to go over quickly with you what comes in it because what comes in it actually is not as important as how to use it. Um, now, uh, getting back to why my mind was changed about this machine is that um, I was asked to teach um, three young people um, how to sew for a couple of weeks to keep them busy through the summer. And um, I actually already had one of these. My niece left it here for me and I tried to use it and I kind of got frustrated with like, what's the deal with this? It's just, I was missing some of the amenities from um, my three four hundred dollar machine such as the the trim the trimmer the automatic thread cutter um, the um, one step buttonhole which we will I will get into that a little bit later um, and then some of the other things I'm used to a slightly heavier b a machine and a larger throat area so some of the things that I was sewing were a little bit bulky um, so that's just kind of the things that you will we I will talk about as we get into it however um, I had three students I just had this one machine and I of course I have other machines but they're all a little bit different and so I didn't want to have to be explaining well on your machine is going to be like this but on your machine is going to be like that I wanted all the students to have the same machine with the same um, attachments and things for um, that so that there was no confusion about somebody having a better machine which that's not really the case so um, these were inexpensive enough and I'm like maybe I should give this another look um, I sat down with my niece's machine um, which coincidentally is my machine now although I'll give it back to her if she wants it um, and I actually sat down with it and started really getting into the basics of the machine. And I was like, well, this isn't a bad machine. Not only is it not a, not only is it a good machine, um, I can actually go down to Walmart and purchase two more. Um, so, and what I, what, um, I was uh, charging for the class, uh, basically it paid for the two new, new machines. And now I have three machines um, for three students at a time. So that's great. So, um, now I don't usually like to promote big box stores, um, but there's just something about being able to go to the store, buy a sewing machine, take it home, and start playing with it that night. Um, in fact, that goes for almost any kind of tool, you know. Um, you can definitely order this online, but then you got to wait a couple of days or more to get it in the mail, and that antipis anticipation for some people is just too much and uh, I didn't want to wait I didn't have the time to wait so um, yeah and so all three of my students use these machines we made small quilts um, and these machines did great and the students didn't have a problem learning the basics because they're all pretty basic machines um, now as I mentioned before there are a couple of little caveats to these machines that are going to be a little bit more manual um, than some of the more expensive machines so I have a couple of machines that have uh, speed control these do not have speed control um, my other machines have uh, 
automatic thread trimmer. These do not have an automatic thread trimmer. Um, my other machines have a one-step buttonhole that does it automatically. Um, these do not. This is a little bit more manual, but I'm going to go through all of these processes and talk to you about all the feats within these series. So I'm hoping that these videos the series of videos, they won't be so long, like we're not gonna, I'm not gonna teach you hours long videos. I'm gonna try to keep the videos between uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, if maybe, if I can do it shorter than that, that would be, that I'll, I'll try to do that. Um, but quickly, um, just again, just to recap, I wanna give you the model number again, it's Brother LX3817. And some of them will have a letter after the number and that just indicates the different color of machine. You see this one has this pretty little uh, paisley design here and this one has more of a geometric design and it's gray. The other ones have uh, cute other designs and they're a different color, uh, blue, light blue or a pink. Um, if you can find the pink one, I'd like to see a picture of it. I think there is a pink one out there. Anyway, so um, I do just want to show you the box really quick. So on the, when you see it in the store, the box is actually, it's a very compact machine. You uh, do get uh, about three, four feet with it. And then this is a darning plate, which I will get into when we actually sew on buttons. Um, that will be in the buttonhole tutorial for this. So you get a little screwdriver and I'm going to talk to you about that in a little bit. Um, so I'll just show you everything that you get. Um, in this so I can put the box away so just just on the outside um, this is what the front of it looks like or that this one oh, without the sticker that's what it looks like on the front and then the other side it just has other pictures for you to look at so again right now this is um, uh, dating this video it's August 2022 and they have these on the shelf um, at Walmart for $85 eight five eighty five dollars so that's under a hundred dollars so if you are watching this video in august and maybe you're a parent that wants to buy um one of your children a sewing machine this is a great option um for 85 dollars if you save 25 dollars a month by december you'll have a hundred dollars um that would include the tax on it right i'm not sure wherever you're in the world um, but 85 dollars is a pretty good um, price so 25 dollars a month that's august august september october november that's four months uh that's a hundred dollars so just think of it that way um and and at that price you can also purchase some fabrics at the same time when you go to walmart because they have a little uh sewing section uh for them to play with okay so um without you know trying to advertise large big box stores i kind of want to get into uh what you're actually going to get in the box because that can be kind of a little bit confusing so um there is this packet of goodies and this is a little packet you'll have your different feet in here and i'm going to open this up really quick because i think i have the main foot already on these sewing machines, which is your, your basic sewing foot. And then now understand that all these parts are gonna be plastic. So um, except for uh, the main foot here is actually metal. And once we get into the actual tutorials of actually how to use the machine, I'll talk more extensively on the feet. So this is your zipper foot and it's plastic. You can kind of see, you see through it. That's your zipper foot. This foot is for making buttonholes. Again, it's not an automatic buttonhole. Um, a step there are like three step three four steps to it but this will help you uh, make better buttonholes and then this uh, little blue edge of it is blue this is what you use to sew uh, buttons on so you don't have to actually hand sew them um, and then it comes with about three uh, bobbins this is a bobbin and the bobbin is very important the size of the bobbin is very important um, and I will go into that once we actually get into setting up the machine it comes with a little package of a few needles for you to start with, although I will tell you that in any machine that you buy, I'm not really crazy about the needles that they come with. Um, I don't know why they seem to be really, really cheap. So I prefer Schmetz brand or the Singer brand. Excuse me. Uh, so either the Schmetz brand or the Singer brand or the brand that I use. Um, so anyway, and then this here, this little plastic thing uh, with this little hole here, this is a darning plate and we're gonna use this in conjunction with this when we put the buttons on. So 
Um, and this can also be, they call this a darning plate. Um, so that's kind of an old word. So darning is basically, they used to, you know, darning is basically mending a hole. Um, and you would hear people talk about darning their socks. When they get a hole in the sock, they'd put a, like a ball in there and then darn the sock, sock back together. Anyway, that's very kind of old school. Uh, but we're gonna use this and this when we sew buttons on, and we will get to that. So um, as that's right now, that's what comes in for the feet. Um, the other thing uh, that you get is a DVD. Now I've watched this entire DVD and it has some very, very basic stuff on there. So I actually wrote on here all of the things that um, the little chapters it has on it um, the funny thing about this is that it goes from setting up your machine which is basically plugging in the foot pedal to the side here and then threading but they don't talk about actually installing the sewing needle the needle to sew they just go into sewing and then later on they tell you how to replace the needle so um, i'll actually probably be going through all of these steps anyway but if you want to watch it the whole thing is only about 15 minutes long so you can sit and watch it um, the one curious thing about this and the manual, I'll, I'll save that for later. Um, it's just a cute little uh, thing. But anyway, it does come with a DVD, although this DVD isn't really going to teach you how to sew, how to really use the machine to sew. It just tells you basically how to set it up and the things to look for on the machine. Okay, so the most important thing that it comes with is the user manual. Make sure you put this in a place where you can always find it. This will have a lot of uh, answers to the questions sometimes when you have troubleshooting you know why is my thread getting what to do with that and then when we're having tension issues so if these words are foreign to you you're gonna learn them as I go through uh, the tutorial on this sewing machine so it's gonna be a whole series so this manual um, you know keep it in the back sometimes people tape it to the back of their sewing machine I keep all of mine in a big zip Ziploc bag with the pedal. Um, so this is, by the way, this is the foot pedal. It comes here and the foot pedal and the plug to the wall unit are all, all in one. And I usually um, tape them up like this and then I put them in a Ziploc with the manual. Um, and then if I have, like I have multiple machines, sometimes I have the number um, on the machine and then I put the number on the Ziploc so I know it goes to that number. But you know, you can store it however you want, but just keep everything together and don't lose the manual. So um, I will uh, point out highlights in the manual of pages that you will need to ear uh, mark so that you can refer back to it. Um, the other thing that it comes with, it comes with an identification um, list of parts, okay? The parts that it comes with. And then also, it, this is great, and I kept this on the table for my students. This is a quick start guide. So uh, this was this is really great because it actually shows you has the diagrams of how to thread it, how to change the needle, um, and uh, basic operations, how to install the uh, the bobbin. And this is a great little handout to kind of keep at the table um, near the sewing machine. So if you're a student, for instance, if you're teaching, um, they can quickly look at this as a reminder how to do all the things. So this is great. And again, I keep this all in a Ziploc um, with the, uh, the foot presser, the foot pedal, um, so that I don't lose it, okay? So those are all the things that actually come in the box. Um, it does not come set up. So, um, uh, so we will actually just be setting the machine up pretty quickly. Um, there are just a few things um, to understand when you're setting the whole thing up and I'm gonna get this started. Um, I'm not gonna have the needle. The first thing we are going to do is um, Actually, we're going to actually just kind of look at the interface and see what is here on these dials and what they are. Okay, so we will, I'm going to switch the camera around. We're actually going to look at the front of it. And I think I'm probably going to use the uh, white machine because it looks better um, and you can see everything better with the lights. Okay, so let me switch the, the um, camera around and we will get started on the interface. So before I move on, just one more thing I almost forgot about this that it comes with, and it comes with this little T-shaped little metal thing. And this is actually a screwdriver. This is their idea of a screwdriver. Now my other machines come with a larger one that looks like a quarter. So I've already actually lost one of these. Um, it just fell on the floor and I don't know what happened to it. So I, it was actually taped up here on the top of the machine. 
um, so that I, I knew it was there and that's why I forgot to mention it when I went through the baggie of things you have. So my suggestion is either tape this to the machine, uh, keep it in the bag, um, or actually you can use a penny or quarter, if I can grab onto both of them, um, they will also fit um, in this spot here as well. Can you see where I'm pointing? This is where we're going to be removing, unscrewing, and to remove the needle and to replace the needle. So a penny or a quarter works as well in case you um, lose this, okay? So that also comes in the bag. So, or you could use a regular screwdriver if it actually fits in here. It'll have to be kind of short though, okay? So your screwdriver. All right, so here we are at the uh, front of the sewing machine, and there are a few knobs and buttons here to be aware of. So this smaller knob is our tension. This is our thread tension. So our thread comes around here and gets caught in between two tension discs. And what that does is it holds onto the thread just tight enough to make a really good stitch. Um, and so we won't really go into a lot about the tension ex unless um, I will just mention about tension um, once we get to sewing that if you're having uh, trouble with the top or the bottom of your stitching then we will um, consider working with this. Now there is this little notch right up here this is indicates that that is the level along around the knob as far as where your tension um, is directed at the number. So you have numbers zero all the way through nine, a zero being no tension and nine being the absolute tightest tension, which you would never have anything there um, anyway. So there are numbers three, four, and five, and there are lines that are connecting three, four, and five. And between three and five is, this is usually where your best tension will lie. And so when you are lining up the number with your tension, you will line it up with this little notch right up here. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, about tension once we get into the later um, tutorials about this sewing machine. So the other um, knob here is the knob here that has all of the stitches that come with this machine. And there are a total of 17. Um, and I'll go into those in detail in just a moment. I'm just pointing everything out right now. Um, so we'll come back to this knob. Um, again, at the top of this, there is a little notch. Um, it looks like a little arrow and that is where you line up the number of the stitch that you want. I'll bring the camera up much closer um, once we get to actually the details of this knob. So there is a lever here. So this little picture above the letter has kind of like a little U-turn um, with an arrow going back. And this is what you press when you need to stitch back backwards. Um, you'll often say, uh, here people say start with a back stitch and end with a back stitch. That's what you would do here as you um, stitch a couple of stitches you will hit this button down and you will back stitch backwards that couple stitches and then you will release and then stitch um, your seam. So just be aware we will talk more about this once we get to actually sewing. So there is a little circle here with a double-ended uh, arrow here. One has a minus and one has a plus. And then underneath it is a little two top and bottom lines with little zigzags. One is tighter and one is looser. And this is actually used to fine tune the buttonhole once we get there. And there will be a whole separate uh, video on the buttonhole. Now I'm gonna turn this to the side for just a second. And you'll see here on the side, we have another uh, knob here. And this knob or disc um, actually is your hand wheel. And in some cases you may need to do this, uh, need to use this to uh, raise and lower the needle. So if I turn this, if we can kind of get everything in here. I don't, I don't have a needle in here, but you can watch this bar here as I turn it, it will go down. I turn it all the way around and it will go all the way up. So normally you always want to turn this knob going toward you. 
and usually never away from you. So you always want to turn it toward you. Um, and we will be using the hand knob once we actually start and end the stitch line. Um, let me turn this back again. So here we have our power button, the power button um, in the O position. Let me lift this up. So right now it's in the O position, which is um, off, and the on position is pressing up with the slash um, line, okay? And then here, this is where we attach, right here is where we attach the foot pedal. This goes in here, and again, once we get to sewing, um, I will show you how to put this in. We have little uh, ridges here, and then there are matching ridges on the plug here and here, and that will slide in this way. Okay, so we'll talk about the uh, foot pedal uh, a little bit later. So let me move this back, and then I'm just going to tip this, tip this forward, and there are a couple of things on top here that we need to know about. So uh, this piece here is a thread guide, so our thread will go through here most for most everything that we do as one of the first guides. And this little disc here, this is a tension disc. We will need to run our thread underneath and in between that disc here. And then uh, this part here, this is for our bobbin, which I will go in depth um, explaining bobbins and the right size bobbins for this machine. We put our bobbin here and then we push this part over to the post here to get it to wind the bobbin. This is kind of like a gear switch. I'm gonna push this back out. Now this post here is important because this is where we put our thread. Um, and it comes depressed, depressed inside, and all you need to do is pull it, tug on it, and pull it out. And I will pull that up so you can see it a little bit better at the top. Pull it out, and then you have a longer post for your thread. And um, I'm going to do a top view of actually putting everything on here as well. Okay, so is there anything on there? There's nothing really on the back of the machine to see that's any significance or the underside of the machine. Um, so that is what all of the knobs are for. And right now, now we're going to go into... Um, the actual stitches here, I'm gonna explain what they are for. So I'm gonna move the camera, I'm gonna get a close up of this knob so you can actually see these stitches really well. Okay, so now we have a closer view of all of the stitches, one through 17. And as I mentioned before, there's this little notch here. Um, if you want, you could draw with a permanent marker a line up here or take a little bit of tape, a narrow piece of tape and put a piece of tape there just so it's a little bit easier to see because this is where you're going to match up the numbers of the stitches. And when you turn this dial, <laughs> that was a little tough, um, you will actually, it will actually click into the number that you want. So this first one is a little bit tricky. So uh, number one is our buttonhole. And in, in, within this one, you see here A, C, and then B and D. And that's how they tell you the process of the buttonhole. It starts with A, which is a top bar tack, and then you switch it over to B to go backwards, which creates one of the sides of the buttonhole. And then you go to C, which puts us back to A, and it does the bottom bar tack. And then you go over to D, which completes the other side of the tight stitches um, for the buttonhole. So it's number one is your buttonhole with four different steps. And I will go into depth about um, how to create a buttonhole um, as a separate tutorial. So going over to stitches two, three, and four, these are here zigzag stitches. And the difference between two, three, and four is the length and the width 
of the stitches. So we will be doing some practicing stitches and I'm going to suggest um, later on once we get into actually sewing that we create a little um, key um, of stitches on fabric so that we know what the stitches look like and how long and wide they are. Okay, so these can be used for sewing stretchy fabrics um, or, you know, clean finishing edges, things like that. Um, so those are the zigzag stitches. So number five um, is a type of zigzag stitch called a satin stitch. And you may recognize this back and forth stitch um, as something that is sewn around an applique or around the edge of a patch that maybe you iron on. So this has three different pictures here within this number because um, within it, if we, from four, if we just go to five, it will actually make a very dense uh, satin stitch, which means that the stitch um, length is very short and compact and it will be very close to each other. But within five, you can kind of turn it a little bit. Um, and so there's some give between this. So I'm not going over to six, it's just within five, there's a little bit of give where you can change the length of the stitch, but not the width. Okay, the width is the zigzag part. Uh, the length is how open the space is or how far those stitches are away from each other. Okay, so we will actually be practicing that and you'll be able to see how I manage that once we get to that tutorial. Okay, so moving on to six through 10. Okay, so getting to six out of five, I'm in five right now, you have to do a little bit of uh, muscle, you need a little muscle to turn it over to six, but be careful that you don't go beyond six. Okay, so there's six. Right up there, okay. So stitches six through 10 are your different lengths of stitches. And um, I'm going to have a sample here to show you um, in just a minute. So six, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. 10 is going to be your longest stitch. Six is gonna be your shortest stitch. Now, this is one of the things that um, bothers me a little bit about this machine but um, if you're you you'll just have to keep it and keep this in mind on most sewing machines when they're talking about stitch length it goes from say one two three four and five so that's what six seven eight nine and ten would be so the one two three four and five on most home sewing machines tell you that that's the length. So one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter, and five millimeter are the stitch, stitch lengths. Um, and so that's what these represent, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So if you have this machine and you're talking with another person that has a different sewing machine and their stitches go from one through five and they're talking about putting their machine on two and a half, that's actually seven between seven and eight on this machine, okay? So most of the stitching we'll be you're doing here will be using eight because that's uh, about a three millimeter. And um, I will double check that, I could be, so uh, I will double check on these lengths, but um, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 represent those regular stitch lengths on uh, for say another machine. So just be aware of that. Um, and 10, once we get into sewing, um, you'll hear people talk about basting stitches. Those are very long stitches. That's what you will use number 10 for. But most regular uh, common sewing on your regular medium to weight cottons, you will sew um, on an eight. So moving on to 11, 11 is another straight stitch. Let me turn this, get that up there. So 11 is another straight stitch, but it's over to the left. So the needle goes all the way over to the left. And sometimes um, this will probably be used more for when we do zippers. We have this special attachment foot that goes on for zippers and we will use the 11 to sew zippers on. Okay, so, 12, let's move on to 12. 
And actually, I'm not sure why they didn't put these together, but it's actually stitch 12 and 14 are our blind hem stitches. Um, that means like, um, you know, if you have a trouser or a pant and you want to hem them um, and you don't have a blind hemmer where the stitching doesn't show to the outside, this is a stitch that you can use. And although they don't give us the proper foot to use for that, usually there is a post um, that helps you align all of the stitching for 12 and 14. Um, we can do it without that and I will show you how to do that. So 12 is um, for your wovens, to do a blind hem with a woven, and then number 14 is for your stretch fabrics or knits. So that's, so that's your 14 click, but let's stop at 13 really quickly. Okay, so 13, as you can see, looks like a zigzag stitch, and it actually is a zigzag stitch. Um, but this one, you see the little dotted lines in it? This is broken. It's actually called a three-step zigzag stitch because you have three little stitches in each of these lines that is going back and forth. And this is great for sewing in elastic. Um, a lot of times if you use a regular zigzag stitch, then sometimes the threads pull and pop and then your elastic comes out but with having the three little stitches in each of these it secures that uh, elastic in a lot better so say you're doing a dress and the dress also has um, say a 3 8 inch elastic going all the way around just to give a little bit more better fit then you would use a three-step zigzag to get that elastic on and sew it right into the seam allowance so the 13 is our elastic attachment stitch, a three-step zigzag stitch. So we already talked about the 14, the 12 and the 14 go together. So I'm going to switch it over to 15 really quickly. And this is what they're calling their overcast stitch. So if you've heard anything um, to the effect of a, what a serger is or an overlocker, those machines are designed specifically to uh, finish the sewn the seam allowance edge rather. So we can do that with this um, and what it does, it makes something that's similar to an overlocker serger stitch um, by just kind of sewing the edges so that they don't unravel. So stitches 16 and 17 are stitches that honestly I probably would never use, but you may, um, especially if you are an appliqueer or quilter. So these two stitches are meant to piece things together and they are generally used as a top stitch. So um, you would sew the seam with a straight stitch, press it open, turn the fabric to the face side, and then you would use one of these two stitches that stitches over that seam to connect those two pieces. Now you could probably do this without stitching the seam. I'm gonna go ahead and play with these two so you can see what they actually do. But these two are really for more decorative um, than anything else, okay? But I will be testing these out and we'll see how we would use these um, in the future. Okay, so those are all of the stitches that um, come with this machine. There are no more, there are no less. Um, I'm gonna switch this back to eight because that's where we're going to start sewing um, when we do our first um, lines of sewing after we get it threaded. Okay. Hi, I'm back. And um, as you can see, I'm in different clothes. Um, and I've actually decided to end the video here for just the beginning part because I've found that this video is already um, over 30 minutes long. And I don't want these videos to be so long that they kind of become a drag. So I wanted to uh, split them up so there are smaller sections and shorter uh, length videos. So just for the beginning, of course, we saw um, the interface and what everything is on the machine. and and then and, um, and that actually took quite a while because you need to understand um, all of the little things that are going on with it. So um, the next video uh, will be the needle installing and then the one after that will be bobbins and threading. Um, and then after that we'll actually get into sewing these stitches so you know what they look like. So before I let you go I just do want to talk about one other thing that I actually start mentioning while I'm doing when I do the uh, stitching uh, videos and I keep talking about a notebook a notebook of samples and I have it here 
well, this is, this is actually one of the notebooks. And I have playlists, I have three playlists that are titled Apparel Arts Academy. And there is level zero, level one, and level two. So level zero is just basically all about threads and needles and different types of machines. Um, and so there's no sewing in those videos. Level one is your basic stitches, seams, seam finishes, um, and we do a railroad zipper. And then level two is more advanced. We get into other details, sewing details um, as well. So, um, and all those videos are completely free to you and they're in the style of the way um, I taught um, my college um, and university courses. So it was an eight week class. I saw my students every day and we did over a hundred sewing samples and about eight garments, six to eight garments. So in eight weeks, so whoa, that was a lot. And But by the time and those students were done with that course they knew how to sew and they also had a book of samples and so that's what I'm going to be doing with when I show you all of these different stitches I'm going to suggest that you actually start creating a book of samples um, and this one happens to look like this I tell you uh, to create you know individual pages with cardstock mounting them on cardstock and then putting them in these um, protectors and then putting them in a notebook and then um, dividing them by style or type um, and then it's easy for you to find and go back to refer to so there will be a level three in this but um, it will probably not be free because those are very detailed like we're going to be doing welt pockets um, notch collars and things like that so they're a little bit more involved but I just wanted to show you the notebook that I'm talking about um, in the later videos that I do so this is what it looks like and I um, encourage you to go check out apparel arts Academy playlist right here on this YouTube channel. So um, that's it for this section. Um, if you want to learn more about this brother sewing machine, the LX3817, continue to watch the videos in this playlist. And of course, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button and you'll be notified whenever I list a new video. As always, thank you for watching and be well.